Hi, it's Lindsay here with the next instalment of your series of exercises to help you feel the difference. And today we're going to start on the mat. You don't actually need any equipment for this at all, just your lovely selves. Uh, you might want a cushion uh, just for a bit of head padding, but other than that, we are good to go. All right, so we're going to... A little block. Okay, so we're going to start just with a little check in. Have your feet together to begin with, and then just open your toes and then just open your heels a little bit. That will give you just round about hip width apart. So just take a few moments to check into your breath. And just notice how your body feels today in connection with the mat. So where are the concentrations of weight? Where are the spaces? So if your body was a watercolour painting with the white spaces and the contact between your body and the mat being the concentration of paint where would the colours be? Where would the colours be? Where would the colours be most intense? And where would the paler colours and where would the white spaces be? So let's move into the first bit of warm up exercise, which is going to be some pelvic tilts. So just starting to rock gently through the pelvis, rocking back and forth. Exhaling as you rock the pelvis backwards. Inhaling as you release the pelvis forwards. And just see if you can keep your, your big bottom muscles quite soft when you do this. So just using the muscles more at the front through your abdominals to just rock back and then release as you move forwards. So this pelvic tilt is the same movement actually as your horse makes with each counter stride. So as well as it kind of mobilising your back as we're doing now, it's a really useful um, mobiliser for the horses to do say trot counter transitions because they get this same this same pelvic tilting action. Okay, so now let's just let your pelvis rest somewhere between those two points and in what we call a neutral position so that your hip bones here and your pubic bone here are on, on a fairly horizontal plane. So you'll probably have a small air space between your lower back and the mat. So here we're going to take the uh, hands behind the head and just interlink the fingers. You can give the very, very top of your neck, just where your kind of skull meets the, your neck, a gentle massage with your thumb. So just rubbing gently across the small, tiny muscles in the kind of, in the ridge between your um, the bottom of your skull and your neck. So you can just do that any time you're in this position really with your thumbs. Anyway, we're going to take the elbows just very slightly away from the floor and then on an in-breath just um, preparing and then on your out-breath we're going to just do a little tiny, tiny curl up and then breathe in to release. So exhaling to curl up Inhaling to release and just keeping your pelvis really still as you do that. So we're not actually disturbing the contact between your lower back and the floor at all when you do that. It stays the same. So whatever kind of space you've got, just a small amount of air space, that stays the same as you curl up. What you will feel is you will feel your lower ribs start to connect into the mat a little bit. And as you do this movement, 
We're just going to feel that the movement comes from here and you can keep the same relationship between your chin and your collarbone. So the effort, the movement comes from just at the, the kind of um, place where your two halves of your rib cage meet together. So your upper abdominals. Okay, so bringing the arms down by the sides. Then let's bring one leg up into tabletop position as we exhale. And then on your next exhale, we're going to float it back down again. Same thing with the other one. Exhaling to float up and exhaling to return to the mat. And as you do that, you're going to keep the pelvis just really still. The same relationship between both sides of the pelvis and the mat. And then we're going to take one leg up and then the next out breath, we're going to just think about keeping very, very still and thinking about the two hip bones just kind of gently gathering together as you take the second leg up into tabletop. All right. Let's take the arms up towards the ceiling and then we're just going to keep breathing as you reach alternate limbs away from each other. So diagonal pair, it's like an upside down trot, sort of. <laughs> So you might want to breathe out as you reach, breathe in to return, breathe out to reach, breathe in to return, and so on. So you can allow your thumb to lead the movement as you take the arm back. And this is just a little bit easier on the shoulder than doing it with your back of your hand leading the movement. Okay, just cover your knees into your chest for a moment, rocking from side to side. And then we can just make that a little bit more difficult so we can come back into the same position. But this time, let's interlink the hands behind the head. And we're going to still do this little reaching movement with the legs, but let's see if we can curl the upper body up at the same time. And if you want to make that a little bit more challenging, you can actually put a little rotation in there too. Keeping the pelvis very, very steady, equal weight on both sides of the pelvis, almost as if on each side of your pelvis you've got um, an old fashioned weighing scale with a little bowl on each side and the weights in the bowl are going to stay super even as you move. Okay, let's cuddle the knees in again, just rock side to side. And then, knees down one at a time, and we're going to move over onto your side to do a few more exercises. So this is where you might want to put a little bit of a pad just see how it feels on your neck. I'm just going to extend this underneath arm, palm up towards the ceiling, and then you can put a little bit of extra padding in if you wish. We're going to have the knees bent and the heels together, and then we're going to have the top um, hand on your hip bone. Now see how that feels, you're going to actually almost encourage that top hip bone to reach away from your ribs. You may want to actually hook your thumb 
around the shelf um, of your pelvis to help draw that away from you. It can just feel a little bit easier to keep the chest and the shoulder a little bit more open in that uh, position. Okay, so here we are with our heels in line with our seat bones. And we're going to keep your heels together throughout this movement as we go into a little bit of a clamp. So as you exhale, you're going to keep your heels together, open your knee towards the ceiling, and inhale to slowly lower. Now, as you do this, I'd like you to imagine that between your heels, you have a winning lottery ticket. So do not let your winning lottery ticket be swept away in the breeze. Keep reaching that top hip down away from your ribs. You'll notice you have a little space underneath your waist as you do that. We're going to do three more like this, so five all together. Keeping those heels squeezed, allowing the toes to open as you move, and keeping the pelvis really still as you do that. So hopefully you'll feel kind of the work going on around the sort of side of your bottom really. Now if you'd like to make that a little bit more challenging, you can actually lift your heels just a few inches from the mat and then repeat the movement again. So we're going to do five, Keep those heels squeezed all the way through. Remember, you do not want to let that winning lottery ticket blow away, even though you're holding it up off the ground. Checking into your breathing. Pelvis staying still. Lowering the heels, you might want to give your bum a bit of a rub. And then we're going to take both legs along the mat. You can place this top hand uh, just in front of you, level with your chest. Or if you want to make it more difficult, you can have it alongside your thigh or in the same position as we had it um, before. Okay. But here, if you want a bit of help to balance. So keeping uh, the feet just uh, in a position so you can just see your toes when you glance down. That's the kind of arrangement that we want through the body. And then we're going to do five lifts. So just bringing that top leg um, just to hip height. Keeping the foot uh, just in a, a position that's sort of as if you were standing on the ground really. Moving as you exhale, lowering as you inhale. Okay, and now let's see if we can hold that leg in that position and we're going to draw some circles in the air just five see how circular you can make your circles and see how still you can keep the rest of your body as you draw your circles so if you had a little sh a torchlight shining from your tummy button it should hopefully stay shining parallel to the floor and not towards the floor or towards the ceiling. So when you've done the five in each direction, let's just lower that leg and then we'll turn over and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just going to bring myself up to a sitting position and then swap it around. And we'll do exactly the same little series on this side. So just with your padding or your cushions, you just really want the head kind of to continue in the same 
line is the spine really, we don't want it up here. Um, so if you're finding that you, you feel a bit crunched on the top, just you might need to reduce your padding, but equally if you feel a bit crunched underneath, you might need a bit more. So here we are on the other side, heels in line with seat bones. We're gonna hook that thumb around the top of the pelvis just to draw that top hip away from the lower ribs. Heels are going to stay together and let's do five of our little clams. So exhaling and then inhaling to lower. And again, you can think about that kind of little torch light shining from your tummy button and the bees stay really, really steady as you move. Remember your lottery ticket between your heels. And you might also want to think about imagining that somebody's got a little string attached to the outside of your knee and they're just pulling your knee up. So it's almost moving by itself. Let's try that slightly more difficult version where the heels are going to come off the floor. So again, keep those heels squeezed, keep your lottery ticket but somebody is just pulling up that knee by a little string. Five of these. Are your heels staying in the same place or are they floating up and down a little bit? Let's see if we can keep them really steady. Just two more. And then we'll lower the heels. You can uh, just give your bum a little rub if it wants one. And then lengthening out those legs. So remember we want to just about, just about see your toes if you have a little glance down. So the legs are just a bit forward of absolutely completely straight with your body. So let's hook that thumb on top again or if you want a little bit more support for balance you can have this hand down here but either way we want to be keeping the body very very still and connected in the places where it's connected with the mat but remember i said about thinking and noticing where your body has concentration of color and where the white spaces are Hopefully we'll have quite a, a marked white space under this lower waist here and a good concentration of colour under your hip and under your ribs, under your lower leg and under your arm. Okay, so just exhaling to bring this top leg to hip height, inhaling to lower. Noticing where your little torch light is pointing. Is it staying really steady? Or is the beam moving and flickering around a little bit? So let's try our circles. So we've got up to hip height, and then we're going to do five circles. And just make sure you're breathing. Same the other way, keeping that torchlight shining from your tummy, really steady. And then lowering. Again, if that wants a little rub, you can just give it one, a little massage. We're going to go now on to um, all fours. So just moving into here. Now when you're on all fours, we want to have the hips directly above your knees and your shoulders directly above your wrists. Just keep your eyes on a little spot between your hands, so we're going to avoid in this business or this. So just keeping the back of the neck 
nice and long. All right, here we go with our little stealth abdominal exercise. Curl your toes underneath you. Take a breath in to prepare. As you breathe out, we are going to lift the knees and hold them there for anything between three up to ten breaths, if you fancy it. Oh, goodness me, keep both elbows slightly soft. You might want to give a little nod yes with your head and a little shake no. Keep the shoulders down away from the ears, slowly lowering both knees with control. Excellent, you can uncurl your toes. And then let's slide one hand um, away from you along the mat, followed by the other one, keeping the body really still. Same with each leg, one and two. Take that into diagonal pairs, changing each time. Now we're going to take that up into the air a little bit now. So I'd like you to move with your thumb leading the movement once again. Let's give your shoulder a little bit more room to move. Moving with flow, moving with control. It's a right way round trot now, sort of. <laughs> And then we're going to imagine that we're frozen in time. Just, just hold this for a couple of breaths and return. And the same thing, hold for a couple of breaths and return. Super. And then we're going to sink down onto your mat. If your head doesn't easily meet the floor, you can make a one potato, two potato, and just rest your forehead here. Breathing full and wide into the back and the sides of your ribs. And almost feel the back of your ribs breaking into a lovely smile across the back of your body. Okay, hands on the mat, we're going to come up into standing, so you're going to curl your toes underneath you, you're going to rock onto your toes, look at a spot between your toes, take your bottom up into the air and then we're going to roll up into standing. So to finish off with, we're going to do a little bit more of a dynamic um, finishing exercise. Actually, this is a really good one to do just before you ride. So it's a good pre-ride one that you can do in your stable. Uh, and it works with the body in, in lots of different ways. So um, across different planes of motion and uh, works on lots of different parts of your body. So it's quite efficient. We'll, we'll have one uh, version to begin with and I'll give you another one. We're going to have the feet fairly wide, uh, as, as wide really as you can sort of comfortably and confidently take them. We're going to keep the feet facing forwards and uh, as you go through this exercise we're going to be shifting our weight from side to side. The straight leg foot needs to stay well grounded through the outside borders here. Okay so keep that keep that sense of grounding. We'll begin with just a bit of a weight shift so as you send your weight over to one side, you're going to send your bottom, your pelvis, simultaneously backwards. Okay, so as we shift your weight through here, send the pelvis back, and then through to the other side. So you might start to feel this through the inner thigh a little bit. And then as we send the hips backwards, we're going to reach forwards with the hands. Make sure you're breathing. And as you shift the weight, you'll be feeling all sorts of things moving and stretching a little bit, lengthening and loading. And you can start to reach into slightly different directions. 
So you can reach a little bit high, you can reach a little bit low, you can reach across to one side, or the opposite side, all which will have a slightly different um, way of working into your body. So see how that feels, you can stick with that bone for another few motions, or we can actually step into the movement. So I'm going to, um, I can, in the middle of my mat, have the luxury of going both ways, but if you're short of space, you can just um, keep going the same way. Entirely up to you. All right, so we're going to step and reach. Step and reach. And again, we can put these little rotations in. And we can vary how we're stepping. So we could step forward a bit or um, even backwards a little bit of the other leg. So reaching again, just playing around with different ways of placing your aim. All again, which will have slightly different sensations through your legs, through your hips, through your back, and the whole body. So I hope you enjoyed that. As always, you can give me some feedback. I'd love to hear how you're doing. Um, have a great day and have fun with your movement practice. See you soon.